Well, good morning and welcome to Christian Chapel. It's good to see everybody here today and uh, good to have you. God bless you for coming. Love you. It's a good day to be at church. It's not a good time to be in Israel. Uh, they have gone through some really, really tough, tough days in the last couple of weeks. And uh, as a church, I can say for me, and I think I can say for our church, we certainly, definitely support Israel and all that, all that she does, all of who she is. And so this morning, what I'd like to do is uh, have a prayer for Israel. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me right now, and let's uh, just just share this prayer with me as we pray for our, our ally, as we pray for uh, Israel. Let's lift them up in prayer. And if you'll just pray this prayer with me, and it starts like this. Dear Lord, please bring healing to Israel. Israel is your chosen nation and the country that is close to your heart. They have suffered much pain and hurt these past few days. Please bring peace security, and healing into their hearts. Not only provide them with this, but also provide them with swift recoveries from their injuries and give comfort to the hearts of the individuals who lost their loved ones in this catastrophe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Now let's stand and sing. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a great place we have to lean this morning on the arms of Jesus. Let's sing together. Sing it with me now. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. This time I'm going to ask our ushers to come receive our tithes and offerings.
cannot compare to the glory of your love There is no shadow in your presence No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne Before the Holy One of Heaven it's only by your blood and it's only through your mercy Somebody that wants to sing, Jesus loves me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. We need to get my little brother though. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus loves me, yes I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. All right, one more. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Two steps. One more verse. You know what it is. It is if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tag. Out. Sit on a tag. And he is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from the dead, and he is Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sing, He's my Lord. Yes, He's my Lord. Sing it, church. He's my Lord. He has risen from the dead and he's my Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We serve a Lord that deserves to be worshiped what i want you to do right now would you can, would you just close your eyes and some of us have so many different uh pictures of who we think jesus is and what he looks like is what i'm trying to say but whatever jesus looks like to you would you would you just get that picture in your head right now and would you just uh he's blessed us man he has blessed us so much would you just worship him for just a, just a couple of minutes? Let him know how much you love. Just tell him. Tell him right now, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Just give him praise. Jesus, Jesus, Lord to me. He's my master, savior, prince of peace, ruler of my heart today. Jesus, Lord, To me, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, to me, Master, Savior. 
Prince of Peace Ruler of my heart today Jesus Lord to me Jesus Lord to me He's Jesus and your Lord to me Jesus we love you we love you with all of our heart our soul our mind and our strength and in the quietness of these few moments Lord we pour our heart out hear our hearts sing to you Lord hear our hearts give you praise for saving us for forgiving us for sustaining us, for loving us. We didn't deserve it, Lord, but you did it anyway out of your great love. Jesus, Jesus, you are Lord to us. You are Master, you're the Savior, you're the Prince of Peace. You're the ruler of our hearts. Jesus, you're Lord. You are Lord to us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk to you today about a fig tree. About a fig tree. Anybody have a fig tree in your yard? Yeah, some of you do. Uh, my grandmother did, and we enjoyed some wonderful figs. One of my favorite things uh, that my grandmother made was fig preserves. And uh, she would cook some hot, and I, here I am talking about food again, right before, you know, uh, she'd make some hot homemade biscuits, and I put some fig. Oh my goodness, that was better than uh, a lot of stuff. But uh, I want to talk to you about a fig tree. And our scripture comes from uh, Luke 13, 6, 9. It goes like this Then Jesus, then he told this parable a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. He went to find a fig, no figs on this tree. So we said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, three years, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. He didn't mince words, did he? Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? We've got some other trees out here. Why is it using all their soil and it's not producing anything? But, sir, the man said, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then we'll cut it down. I want to share with you, first of all, some, some uh, facts about the tree. Facts about this fig tree and the parable that Jesus told. Number one, it was a planted tree. It was not there by chance. It was not there by accident. Somebody wanted this tree planted exactly where it was planted. And the same is true with you. You're not at Christian Chapel Free Will Baptist Church by accident. God has you here for a purpose. God has you here today for a purpose. He has you as a member of this church for a purpose. You're not here by accident. You're here because God wants you here. You see, God has a plan for your life. And the biggest plan he has for your life is that you get saved, is that you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and he has forgiven your sins. But he has a plan for your life, and we are not here by chance. Just like that was a planted tree, I believe God plants us in places. Now, 10 years from now, we might be somewhere else. I, I, I hope not, but we might be somewhere else. Might be another place where you're planted. Uh, and it, not necessarily church, but maybe some other 
uh, ministry that you are engaged in. But God has you here. He has us here for a purpose. This was a planted tree. We're planted folks. God has a plan for our lives. We're not here by chance. The second thing about this fig tree, it was a tree with a purpose. A tree with a purpose. Jesus said that the owner came looking some fruit. You see, maybe his grandmama made some fig preserves and and she had some homemade biscuits cooked up and he wanted some fig, I, I don't know. But he came looking, he came looking fruit. The purpose of this tree was to bear fruit. That was its purpose. He came seeking fruit because he knew that a fig tree should be producing figs. You see, it was to give an account of itself by the figs it produced. And I want you to listen to that statement again. It was to give an account of itself by the figs it produced. It was not really there for its beauty. It was there to serve. It had a purpose. Listen, you just like that fig tree, have a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. We are put in, we are planted to serve. We are planted to produce fruit. It's our purpose too. God never planned for us just to live our lives for ourselves. He never thought about that. He never wanted that. He never wanted us to get on an island somewhere and just live for me. Man, we, we, live in a, we live in an it's all about me world, don't we? All about me world. I don't know, uh, I've read somewhere how many selfies are taken a day. The figure is humongous. How many selfies are taken a day? You see, we live in a world where it's all about us, but that's not God's purpose for us. We were planted to produce fruit and to be useful. That was God's purpose for us. The third thing about this tree, it was planted in a vineyard. It was planted in a vineyard. You see, it was in kind of a privileged uh, place. It had protection. It had support. Someone was looking after it, uh, supposedly. I think we have the benefit also of being planted in a vineyard. I believe the church is a great vineyard. We have our church. We have our families. And because we have the benefit of the church, our obligation to serve others increases. To whom much is given, Much is expected. Because we're part of a vineyard, because we're a part of something greater than us, great things are expected of us because we're part of Christian Chapel, Free Will Baptist Church. God expects things from every one of its members. We're in a privileged place. We have the support of one another. You prayed for many different people today. You asked prayer requests, uh, prayer for many people today. That's part of the support of the church. We have the fellowship of the church. We have good times. We have fun times. Next Saturday night is going to be a fun time that we're all together and, and, and doing fun things with, as, as families, as, as, as kids and as older adults. We're going to be together. That's part of the church. And when we need each other, we're going to be there for each other. You see, it's kind of a privileged place that God's put us in. And because of that, he expects each of us to produce the fruit of the Spirit that is in us. We have teaching. You had a great lesson, Sunday school lesson this morning. We have preaching. We have children's church. We have different things, uh, teaching uh, opportunities, learning opportunities from the church. 
So the tree was planted in a, in, in, in a vineyard in a place where it got support. And because of that, a lot was expected out of this tree. Next thing I'd like to share with you about this tree is this. Here's the bad part. It was a tree that was not doing what it was supposed to do. It was not fulfilling its purpose. You see, for three years, the owner came to get a mess of figs. And for three years, he didn't get anything. It was a tree that was not fulfilling its purpose. I don't know if I ever told you about my tree in my backyard. One of the most beautiful trees I've ever seen. Sometimes I sit on my deck and just look at that tree. And Anita might be out there with me. I said, Anita, look at that tree. She said, oh, no, here we go again. Here we go again. I said, do you see how straight it is? Isn't it? It is, it's wonderful. It's a pecan tree. Look at it, Anita. She says, oh, no, here we go again. It's beautiful. It'll make you just sit there and look at it. But you know something? I've not had one cotton-picking pecan off that tree. Not one. Not one. It's a pecan tree. Now, I'm not a, a horticulturist, but I know this. I know if it's a pecan tree, it should be producing pecans. If it's an apple tree, better be producing apple. If it's a fig tree, better be producing figs. That, that, that tree didn't produce anything. I cut it down. I did. But I didn't cut it down for that. We were going to do something else in their backyard. That's why it came down. <laughs> it didn't have any fruit. It wasn't producing. This fig tree was not doing what it was supposed to do. So there were some, there's some results coming. There's some results coming. Let's see what the results are. Number one, Results of this fig tree is its uselessness. Its uselessness. You see, we can, in church, we can be just as straight as my old pecan tree used to be. Just as straight. We can know scripture. We can repeat scripture. We can pray beautifully. But if we are not producing fruit. We are useless. That's what Jesus said. That's what the Bible says. That's the results of this tree. No fruit. It had no value. It was supposed to be producing, and it wasn't. And it was proclaimed. It was pronounced useless. It was guilty of uselessness. And this is true of people today. Sometimes even people in the church, they're not guilty of a vicious wrongdoing. They didn't violate the law. They're not a candidate for prison. What are many people today guilty of then? Uselessness. Not producing fruit. Not doing what they were designed and created to do. In the parables of judgment, you won't find one offender cast out because they did something horribly wrong. Not one. You won't find one offender cast out because they did something horribly wrong. It's not something they did. It's something they left undone. The five foolish bridesmaids, they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't hurt anybody. What were they guilty of? Why couldn't they go in? Because they didn't have oil. They were not doing what they were designed to do. The man of one talent. You remember the talents when, when the, the guy gave the talents, the man of one talent? Why didn't he make it? He, 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 didn't, he didn't steal. He didn't hurt anybody with it. What did he do? You remember? He buried it. He buried it. He buried it. And then the fig tree. No figs. No fruit. 
So what did the owner say? Hey, cut it down. I want to tell you something. We deserve to be cut down. That's what we deserve. That's what I deserve. That's what I deserved before I met Jesus Christ. I deserved to be cut down. I wasn't doing anything for him. I wasn't producing anything for God. I was out there in the pit, in that horrible place, in that darkness that we call the world. I deserved to be cut down. This tree, that's what it deserved. It was using up good ground, Jesus said in his parable. Cut it down. Cut it down. Get rid of it. But the guy who tended the vineyard said, wait a minute, hang on, let's give it another chance. Listen, friend, that's the most beautiful phrase you will ever hear in your life. Jesus said, Father, let's give him another chance. Let's give him another chance. Grace, grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. It's all about grace. It's all about his mercy. The owner wanted to chop it down. The vineyard keeper said, let's give it another chance. And I, I, I believe that's, that is the plea that my, that my Lord makes for me. Father, let's give Craig another chance. Let's give them another chance. Put your name there. Let's give him, let's give her another chance. Let's extend some grace here. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. He didn't deserve it, but let's do it. Let's give them grace. Let's do some forgiving here. He said, let me do this. Let me dig around it. I might even have to take some some limbs off, and that's exactly what has to happen to us sometimes. Sometimes we have to have some pruning so that fruit will bear. Sometimes we have to get rid of some things that's that's keeping us from bearing the fruit. Sometimes, and it's not an easy thing, sometimes it hurts when we have to get rid of those things. But it's those things that are keeping us from being who God wants us to be to be. Let's teach it some more. Let's give it some more of the word. Let's give it some more prayer. Let's give it some more support. Let's love it some more. Grace, grace, grace. So this brings us to this question. Can a person really be a Christian and be fruitless? Can we really be saved with no evidence of our salvation? Can a person really be a Christian? Can we call Jesus Savior and not really call him Lord? Can we really be saved with no evidence? Listen to what the word tells us. In John 15, 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. If we are abiding in Christ, if we are Christians, if we are saved, if we've surrendered our lives to him, John tells us that we will be bearing much fruit. John 15, 8. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. And in Matthew 3.10, we find these words. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Where there's no fruit, probably is not much root. Hmm? Where there's no fruit, there's probably not a lot of root. This story 
in Luke 13, and you have to read these things in context. In Luke chapter 12, he talks all about repentance. Jesus talks all about repentance. And this is a story about repentance. It's a story about we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're not producing the fruit that we're supposed to be producing. We don't have the love, the joy, the peace, the goodness, the meekness, the patience, the self-control, all those things. Many of those things are lacking in our lives. Jesus says there, needs, there has to be repentance. There has to be repentance. He wants us to make sure that we are rooted and grounded in Christ, in Christ. You see, no root, no fruit. Man, that's pretty good. No root, no fruit. So I ask you this question today. I ask you this question. I ask me this question. What good is happening at Christian Chapel Church because of me? What good things are happening at Christian Chapel Original Free Bull Baptist Church because of me? What spiritual, what evidence that tells the world that something spiritually wonderful is going on at Christian Chapel Church because of my life? What fruit am I producing that makes a difference in people's lives? What fruit am I producing that makes a, uh, a difference in the lives of my friends? What fruit am I producing that makes a difference in the lives of my children? What fruit am I producing that makes a difference in the people's lives that I work with every day? No root, no fruit. Jesus called them and he calls us to repent, to repentance, to say, I'm sorry. Say, Lord, I haven't surrendered. I haven't yielded my life to you enough that it's producing the fruit that I should be producing. Three years. He went. Every, every year, for three years, he went. Nothing. Can you really be a Christian and produce no fruit? James says absolutely not. Now, understand this, and the, I'm going to close with this. Understand this. Producing fruit doesn't get us saved. Mm -mm. No. Don't make that mistake. Being good doesn't, get, good behavior don't get you saved. It can't. It won't. You're not good enough. I'm not good enough. But James says, faith without works, faith first, without works is dead. How can you be a Christian? How, how can you be a pecan tree? and not produce one pecan? How can you be a fig tree and not produce figs? How can you be a Christian and not produce the fruit of the Spirit? That's the question that Jesus leaves us with in this parable. He hasn't accused us of doing something terribly, horribly wrong. He hasn't accused us of stealing. He hasn't accused us of cheating. He hasn't accused us of lying. Maybe he kind of has accused us of being a little bit hypocritical. Because if we're Christians, Jesus says, we will be bearing fruit. What fruit in my life is making a difference in my world. Let's pray.